I think people can see the heart in it, that it, it's run by um, people that just love the medium so much and the medium in its purest form are artists and writers um, telling great stories. Hi Chilelete. Hello. First question, how are you? I'm very good, thank good. you. I, I love Angoulême. This great. festival is amazing. First time in Angoulême? Yep. Okay. Yeah. It was a great experience. Yeah, it's brilliant. I love okay. it. Cool. Uh, my first question would be, can you tell um, our viewers how you came in the comics industry? Yeah. Because I heard you were kind of always want to be in this industry mm. and I think your journey to it is... Uh, it's an interesting one. Yeah. It's. Um, it's a, a slightly convoluted one, but um, I basically I've loved comics since I was a child and I always wanted to draw comics, but it always seemed like something that was un unattainable because um, I, I, I was um, brought up in a very working class family and like having a career in art was something that just wasn't like even when I wanted to go to art college, my parents were like, why? And, um, and so I never, I never fully pursued it. Like I, I just drew for myself, and I never fully pursued kind of going into that career because I didn't think I'd be able to do it. And so I've always been around comics on the remit, working in comic shops, and then I set up my festival Thought Bubble in 2007 mm -hmm. um, because it was just like a natural progression for living comics and working within the industry. Um, and just through running my festival, I got to know people in the industry. And um, it was around the time that, uh, maybe a couple of years after Fort Bubble, it was around the time social media was really kicking off um, with Instagram and Twitter. And so all the drawings I'd be doing for myself, I'd just post online. And suddenly the people in the industry that knew me through Fort Bubble were like, oh my God, you can draw. You can draw uh, yeah. yeah, and I was like, Ca can I? I, ca I mean, I really, I love drawing, but I, I never thought I was that great. And I think just having that positive reinforcement kind of spurs you on and, and you think, oh, maybe this is something I can do. And um, because people in the industry already knew me, it, it just happened like that. Like I had Will Dennis, uh, DC editor, Shelley Bond, Adam Hughes, like people just messaging me straight away saying, like Adam Hughes sent me a message and said, can I pass your work on to Shelley Bond? Um, Gail Simone and Scott Snyder got in touch about doing American Vampire and it all happened at once and I've not looked back. It's, um, I think it's been maybe like nearly 10 years now and my work is just, it's full on all the time. It's, it's really lovely. I feel very happy. It's like I'm, quite, I'm doing my dream job. That's awesome. Um, I, I think that your style, uh, in fact, I feel your style is a great influence by cinema. Oh, yeah. Um, do you think comics and cinema are kind of related? Obama. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that's why the film industry looks so much to comics and sequential art because it's, you know, you have these amazing stories, but your art direction is all there in front of you. Like, I mean, you don't, you never have to make a comic that's completely literal. Like when they made Watchmen, it was like very little. And I don't think that always works, but. Um, there's there's a very close link between um, cinema and sequential art, and as an artist, um, just just when you're um, telling the story, you know you have to be thinking like a director. You're thinking about camera angles and whether the story flows and making sure characters are positioned correctly, so that so the reader can understand what's happening. So. Um, they, they are things that are closely linked and, and that's obviously come about in recent years with, you know, suddenly there's so much content there and um, Hollywood and the film industry are, are, are always looking for that new content and it's just a, a very natural link. Um, you did special covers for Bird of Prey. Yeah. Uh, we have in France for Black and Ariane and Huntress. Yeah. Um, what do you think uh, that we're using themes, movies to promote comics and in fact through your works, with your works because your designs are closer than the movies once and they, it's used for comics 
in a way to promote them. Yeah. Um, you you mean you mean just generally pe people using art to promote film? Yeah. I mean, yeah. I think that's something that should happen more. Okay. Um, like I I just look back to the golden days of movie posters when you get to see a Star Wars movie poster by the Hindlebrand Brothers or uh, Roger Kessel. Is it Roger Kessel? I can't remember. Um, but um, you know that that was like the golden age for me. And I, I if I had my way of movie posters would be painted and drawn and you know especially um, when you look at the film industry making comic book movies they absolutely should be using the art to promote that I mean it's 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 a different medium of course it's it's moving moving image but you know you want I, I do I do actually feel at the moment that the big publishers have a responsibility to put comics at the forefront of the massive comic film industry at the moment and to just push it more and I, I know they have been making some progress but I think there's more that, that can be done like you go see a Marvel Universe movie wouldn't it be wonderful if there's a clip at the beginning advertising where to buy books and comic shops like I, want, I would love to see more of that yeah so um, you work on Spring Blue Rose with Warren Ellis yeah American Vampire with Gary Simon and Scott Snyder um, and then your work were mostly on covers and illustrations. Yeah. Uh, I know because I've heard you went through um, personal issues and um, at certain point, certain moment of your life. Yeah. Uh, also great joys, to balance, kind of. Yeah. Um, but I think that it, this put in light uh, something really important that the, the weight of deadlines, of the rhythm that is um, imposed by the comics industry. Yeah. Can you talk about that, about this difficult period that you went through? Yeah, and, uh... um, Yeah. I mean, drawing, drawing comics, um, drawing sequential art is incredibly in intense. Like, as soon as you commit to a series, you, you're usually having to, you know, you have to work seven days a week to get that out there. And it can be really grueling. Like, I have friends in the industry that have, um, it's just really taken a toll on the health because you know you're you're static in one place just drawing constantly and so you're right like with me moving forward in terms of sequentials i need to be able to put a lot of time aside for that and it needs to be right as well um so uh, you know uh, warren and i uh, commit to working on this new story heartless okay. which um which ha hasn't come about and it, it's kind of on hold now. I, I don't know if we will revisit that, but there is like a first issue out there that just wasn't published. Um, but around that time, um, I had a lot of personal stuff going on. Um, so I, my, my father died and, and my mum felt very ill afterwards. So she was in intensive care with open heart surgery. So this all happened while I was pregnant. So it was just a very intense all at once and any body going through a situation like that you know it's like losing a parent it's really hits you hard and but because I was pregnant you can't you kind of just keep going like I had my pregnancy hormones making me like feel okay um, but after I had my baby like m my father's death hit me more then um, and it kind of just stopped me in my tracks like mm -hmm. I, I saw a psychologist to kind of work through it um, just to just to d try and force a grieving process because I hadn't done it because I was pregnant and um, it, it would have been impossible for me around that time to to really I needed to keep working because like, I love drawing but doing a sequential story would have just been very hard for me at the time and around that time as well um, War Warren had some quite bad health issues and he, he thought he may have had a stroke but it wasn't a stroke it was something else it was very serious and you know these these kind of personal things happen and and you know your work kind of gets held back and um i think it's just been like the last um half a year really the um the last maybe eight months that i felt i i can commit to a sequential book again and i, I chatted to warren about heartless and I, I was like you know i'm i'm sorry that this didn't go any further for me at this point and he he was always really patient with me. He's just because he knew everything that was going on too, and he was like, you know, you ha it has to be right for you. And whatever story anybody tells you, you know, you've got to pick the right moment to do it. And 
Um, I think so much time went past with Heartless that we, we've kind of, we're both so busy. It, it's kind of been left, um, and I would love to work with Warren again one day. And may, maybe we will come back to this at some point, um, but, but not right now. But, you know, in, in the meantime, with me um, being feeling confident to do sequentials again and to be able to commit the time now that my child's a little bit older, she's like two and a half, I, things aren't as intense and I feel like I can do that. So um, I'm going to have a, a book out this year with Becky Clooney. Yes. Um, and so we we are working on that at the moment and um it, it's not i don't think it's going to be released as a series yet we'll probably just put it out as a, a as a graphic maybe we're kind of deciding what to do yet but we're really excited about that like i love becky's work she's and she's an amazing storyteller yeah i love her stories they're so romantic <laughs> um let's talk now for Brightest side, uh, Thought Bubble. Yeah. The convention you created in 2007, like you said earlier. Um, so, the festival will be celebrating his 13th birthday this year, yeah. in November. Uh, yeah. So, the, the dates in the calendar. Um, one of the ideas that leads you to create this project was to make comics more accessible to. Um, the large public, the largest public as possible, and yeah. especially um, to show people that reading comics can help struggle with issues like dyslexia, mm. something that you went through as a kid, yeah. and this was one of the root uh, elements of this project, if I'm correct. Yeah. Can you um, say to us, did you expect the public reaction? No. They had the Pop <laughs> Festival because it's now a, an enormous festival in uh, in London, and uh, so I guess you're pretty pleased with that. But yeah. How do you feel about the evolution? About the the first um, I know it's the first um, event was totally different yeah. than now. <laughs> it's it's incredible. Yeah, it's incredible. It's amazing. It's it's actually in Leeds, just near Leeds. Not yeah. it's like two hours out of London, Northern England. Um, so last year we moved it to a new place very close to Leeds, it's like 30 minutes uh, on a train, 25 minutes um, in Harrogate, um, a purpose-built convention centre, mm -hmm. so it's, it's going really well. Um, the, w what, what's happened with Thought Bubble, I, I still don't fully understand it. Like, um, I think about it a lot, like it feels like such a phenomenon that you know people have embraced it so much and it, it is what it is and I, can, I often wonder like why why is why has this happened like why is our festival so successful and I think really um, I would like to think that I think people can see the heart in it that it, it's run by um, people that just love the medium so much and the medium in its purest form, our artists and writers um, telling great stories um, and and because we love it so much I think we kind of project that out um, and just on a personal level you know um, I'm, I had a, a kind of a difficult childhood I, I, I didn't really have many friends or, or get on well in life and I, I failed miserably at school and I always felt like an outsider and um, uh, I think really with Thought Bubble it's I really care about building a community something that I wish I'd have had as a child where people can come together and um, feel happy and feel like there's like-minded people in the same room that care about one another and care about the medium and I'm, I'm just so um, I think having positive energy is, is so important like on a variety of levels for like n networking and working you know in the industry but just well-being of people too like especially a younger generation like I think it, it must be so hard nowadays growing up as a child and a teenager with social media which is this entity that you can't control and you know suddenly any any well-being that a child may have had and in, in terms of bullying or anything is amplified and and so i think it is really really important to for everybody to think about community and um the youth uh, at the moment as well and just to make sure just to listen to people more and make sure that people feel okay and and at its heart you know Bob Bubble is all comics but at its heart it's 
it, it, it's a place where I, I, I hope that people can feel safe and happy. This is something that um, we, is really uh, shining on because uh, you've won an award for this event earlier in this year yeah. and you said that uh, you, when you accepted it you said that you're kind of a symbol because Thought Bubble is not just you, it's all the people that makes yeah. it and I found it so accurate because it was uh, actually uh, really moving on the passion leads you through the event and with people around you doing it that's the, the image that you in fact shine upon the event thank so, you uh, thank you so I'm, much i'm not surprised that the event has the aura it has now and uh, yeah i think it's important to, to have this community so uh, a lot of people artists are now coming in uh, thought bubble this year and yeah from, from the beginning actually you've already had quite big now. Yeah. Things. Yeah, because I knew I knew people from um, working in the shop I worked in, mm. like um, comic book retail traveling man. Um, and so I knew guests that had signed there and so, you know, some of them live near me, near me, like Sean Phillips lived in the town I was in and you know, I knew Duncan Fabrado through that and uh, Leah Moore and I think I think Kieran Gillen and Jamie McKelvey have been there from the very beginning as well. Um, so yeah, I, f I think that probably is one of the reasons Fort Bubble has a, a nice reputation and has uh, maybe reached quite far that we ha do have a lot of industry support, um, writers and artists that give their time for free and, and really kind of um, spread the word about what we do. It's, I, I feel really grateful to them. Thank you very much for your yeah, time. Yeah, you're welcome. Yeah, thank you.